I'm Ashley Galante and I'm here with Missy Parkin who just won the Women's World Bowling Tour Finals. Missy, what was your thought process going into the first game knowing that Liz Johnson just shot 268? Well, um, I figured that I was going to have to strike a lot. I mean, both Liz and Kelly, they both threw a lot of strikes. Uh, so I wanted to go out there and make sure that I was really lined up and definitely had a ball in my hands that was going to strike a lot. <laughs> now, I noticed that you struggled with the 10 pin on the one lane. What was going on and how did you adjust to it? Um, actually, starting that match, that lane was actually drier, and as we were bowling, um, the, the oil started to push a little bit, and it actually got tighter down lane, which is why I was leaving all the 10 pins. So I had made a move in the middle of the match uh, that didn't quite work. It still left another 10 pin, so at commercial break, um, I talked with my ball reps, Bugsy Kelly and Jason Couch, and we definitely made a right decision and started striking. <laughs> And how do you handle the pressure bowling on TV? I mean, you throw quality shots. What do you do to help yourself with that? Um, I, I always look at the TV show day as being a really fun day. Um, I like to just take it all in and just remember that, you know, this is what I've wanted my entire life. And so I just try to go out there and have fun. But really when I'm actually competing out there, um, I'm really just focusing on pretending like I'm not bowling on TV. You know, just, it's just me and the lanes and all I need to just go do is go execute and throw good shots. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Galante for Extra Frame. I'm here with Bugsy Kelly who is the Columbia 300 brand manager. Tell me, how did you like working with Missy this week? Uh, well, Missy's one of my favorite people in the world, honestly. Uh, I bowled with Missy when I was about 12 years old. I've known her for, uh, for about the eight, last 18 years of my life. Um, so she's absolutely one of my favorite people and working with her has been a thrill. She's worked for other companies in the past uh, couple years. So getting to have her on our team is just, just awesome for me. How did you guys prepare for this event? Well, we knew the lanes were going to be, it's, you know, it's a short pattern. There's a lot of dry to the right. Um, we prepared by trying to get her some smooth rolling balls in her hands, some balls that we knew wouldn't bounce off the dry too much, which is why we ended up with the Omen. It's kind of a smooth rolling ball, a ball that doesn't bounce too much. And we used a pretty standard layout, but that low pin right there uh, helps the ball uh, kind of smooth out the reaction uh, for her. And why don't you tell us a little bit more about her arsenal? Well, Missy's arsenal, uh, it was only one game that she had to bowl, so we didn't have to do too much preparation with other balls to go to. But she did have an eruption that worked really well in this uh, condition out there. So if the omen was a little bit too strong, we had an eruption to go to. Chris, I noticed you had um, a rough start the second game. What happened and what adjustments did you make? Well, and, and they just reinstated a rule that I think is a great rule, is that the winner doesn't get practice on the pair. Uh, the person coming on got eight shots, Mika did. And when I went there, I played them the same, and the first shot four pin and hooked a little bit more, which I should have anticipated a little bit more than I did. Uh, the second frame I 10 pin, and I tried to make an adjustment off of it, and it flat 10. So uh, I made a ball change shortly after that, and uh, it didn't work on the right lane, but it worked on the left lane. So I, I kept using the mass eruption that I used the first game, uh, and then on the right lane I switched to an eruption, which is a cleaner cover, and that allowed me to get to that spot easier and, uh, and have a little more down lane reaction. Now, how do you answer questions on the show and bowl at the same time? <laughs> well, I have a busy mind, so it's not really doing much, but just uh, kind of spilling out what's already in there. So for me, it's a great download. I, I don't mind talking about it all because it lets me actually say it out loud and kind of get it out and then get rid of it and then go back to committing to what, I'm, to what I'm doing. And most of the time, Randy's questions are good, and they're directly related to what I'm already doing. So it, lets me, it gives me a chance to verbalize what I'm, what I'm trying to commit to on the lanes. Now, how did you mentally overcome the past? <laughs> well, you only have two choices. You can either adapt or you perish. So uh, there's things to be learned all the time, and uh, you learn from your mistakes, and I've had a lot of things to learn from, and so hopefully I picked up more lessons than most of the guys around me. And, uh, and you know, I've learned how to apply a few of those, but working with Mark Baker on a lot of different things, uh, we found a couple of things that I do in, in some different situations. And so now, you know, Mika took a couple of re-racks. He was kind of trying to slow things down, so I got up and I kind of went through the routine of, what I need to do to perform in that situation, and I made the shot that I wanted to make. What happened with Mike Fagan the first game? He seemed a little agitated. Well, I think a lot of us, I think, are pretty wound up when we haven't been on a TV show for six months. And, uh, you know, it's, it's natural adrenaline, and it comes out in him sometimes. Uh, you know, something bad happens, so it comes out in, in you know, a less positive way that time. But uh, we're all wound a little tight that first show when you haven't been on TV for, for a long time, no matter how many shows you've been on. So uh, uh, it's not unusual, it's just something bad, you know, that first frame where he stuck or slipped. I'm not sure which one it was, I didn't see it. But 
uh, you know, nobody wants to start like that. And so he was naturally not very happy. I would, I'd probably been in the same in his situation. I'm here with Bugsy Kelly, who is the Columbia 300 brand manager. Bugsy, now you had three Ebonite International guys make the show. Do they work together to break the lanes down, or do they go their separate ways? Well, with a pattern like this, a shorter pattern with a lot of bumps to the right, you know, there's really one one correct way, to, you know, to play the lanes. That's how our guys felt. So they didn't work against each other or for each other to break the lanes down. They all had a game plan. They went out and executed on their own. Now, what did Chris throw? Chris threw this mass eruption. He also switched to a regular eruption uh, during the game. Uh, he, he found the lanes to be a little wiggly down lane. He needed a ball to, uh, to get through it a little bit more. But he started with this mass eruption, our brand new ball from Columbia. Pin above the ring finger, that's probably about four and a half inches for Chris Barnes, no weight hole. Uh, and it comes uh, 4,000 out of the box, but we polished it up a little bit. And then he used an eruption that he's, he's used quite a bit all over the world. And how did he play the lanes? Well, Chris played out uh, for the most part. Um, once they started to push a little bit, he was able to throw it more towards the dry a little bit. But he played out for the most part and uh, just tried to control the back end a little bit. Well, thank you. I'm Ashley Glante for Extra Frame.